Hello, and um, today I'm gonna go ahead and solve this problem. This problem is number uh, 8.42 from the textbook of from this textbook over here, probability and statistics for engineering and science. Okay, now this problem is asking to consider using a z-test to test the null hypothesis when p equals 0.6 and determine the p-value in which each of the following situation and so normally this problem is just, they already started for you in a way normally they will ask you to figure out what your null hypothesis and what's your alternative hypothesis the in this case a null hypothesis so, for example, if they ask you a problem like um, there was a survey um, you know, in the past and they noticed that they, they claimed that there was a, there was a p value or a, a proportion of 0.60, and then they say, oh, by the way, this other guy has done a survey like last week. And they say no, the the probably the proportion or the average and, and percentages. That's what that's where the proportion comes in. That's like saying percentages by in decimal. And they, so a new scientist comes and says, Oh, by the way, I did my my uh, I did my research and it's not 0.06. It actually came out some number more than 0.06. It could be oh it came out 0.80 or 80%. So they kind of already set it up for you because normally this typically this is the setup right here. This is your setup right here. For A. So this will be question A. And now they say, okay, well, if that's what the setup is, that's why, you know, uh, you know, we're claiming that this is the 0.60 is the real mean or the real average of this experiment or your research. And then this other guy said, no, it's actually more than 0.60. Then you said to yourself, well, then what, what will be the probability if, it, you know, if it's more than point, uh, point 0.60? And that's what they talk about here. And it's question A. Oh, pretty much the whole question. So question A talks, ask about, okay, so if my probability is more than 0.60, I mean, my mean proportion and proportions, is more than 0.60 what is the probability or the p-value b if my mean will is less than 0.60 then what will be my probability or the p-value c if it's not equal to 0.60 then what will be the p-value and then d if it's less than 0.60 what will be the p-value okay now the also again normally they will go ahead and say to you, okay, uh, to find this out, they will give you like, oh, my, for example, my, the scientist who did the new research, he figured out that instead of 0.60, it was like 0.80 or whatever number. And then from there, you have to find the Z-score, which they already did it here. Now, I'm not saying 1.47 is the same as 0.80. I'm just, just an example throwing out numbers there okay so they figure out that uh, they get instead of giving us the actual value they give us the z-score okay so that's that's good because uh, especially if you do this by if you want to do this by hand which by we're going to do this uh, using the table we're going to do this using excel we're going to use using the program r with the visual studios you know and program and I'm going to show you guys how to do it using the TID4 or ID3 they all pretty much work the same all right so first little let's see a little bit of a get knowledge here okay so I always recommend for you guys to do your bell curve so this why this give you a visual you know what's going on now in this tutorial here 
I'm going to try to do as similar as this book, the way this book wants you to know it, but at the same time, how your professor probably will want it. Because there's really different ways to do this or different ways to show this, but professor has their, you know, the particular ways in the book too. I noticed that this book, uh, some of the symbols or notations are a little bit different than other textbooks, but they all pretty much mean the same thing. Okay, so let's do the little review here. Little, uh, so we have a normal bell curve, and for the reason that this is a normal, this is considered a normal distribution. This is a normal distribution uh, curve. And your mean is going to be right here in the middle. There's your mean. Okay, your P naught. All right. In your case, your mean is 0 0.06. Now, if you want a um, disease score, because those are, these are considered the these are going to be, that's your value. But is for a Z score uh, number, is zero. So uh, record that the mean and z score is zero, and we go standard deviation by one. Okay, and we have a mean, or or in this case would be your p. You do a p not equals zero, okay? Because we do in proportions. But that will not work. Um, try to get some symbols. Let me get my symbols right over here. That's your standard deviation, which would be one. So you're gonna have one, two, three. And on this side we have negative one. Whoop. Negative one, negative two, negative three. All right. Don't worry about the three. Okay, so knowing this so far, have this pretty much is like your visual part, your visual aid here. So for letter A, they said if I have a z score which is going to be greater than the 0 0.6 when z score equals 1.47, 1 1.47, 1 be right here somewhere. Oops, I don't know why I keep. Okay, so this is what it looks like the shading area. That's gonna be your p value or your probability. P value. They want to know the area of the shading area. And uh, what is the probability when it's bigger than 0.60 when z equals 1.47? Again, if it was a complete store, a complete um, problem with stories and everything. Probably it should, it should, it will probably say something like this. And if you have a new study that says that um, your mean is actually 0.80, which is bigger than 0.60, what will be your p-value or the probability for that new study to pretty much occur or have works? Um, occur will be the proper way to say it. Will be the probability. For that new study, see how many? And I saw where there's this the statistics hard because of the all these wordings going so going around. Be shocked. Don't want to mess up on the wordings. What is the probability? Okay, the p value. Presents the probability. Oh, I'm forgetting my words. Sorry, guys. Give me a second here. And I have it with me too. So 
sorry, guys, sorry, sorry. Okay, what's the probability? Yeah, for this to occur when the speed when the when your given new research says oh uh, is it's not 0.60 uh, my peak and my mean is my mean is 0.80. What's the probability for the 0.80 to happen? And this pretty much in this case they gave us a z-score of 1.47. So they say what's the probability for a z-score of 1.47 to have uh, to happen given this information. So using the table, I'm going to go to this table right here. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's probably in the back of your book or in front of your cover of your book. And I'm going to look for what's it? What's it? 1.47. Now, in the in this book, if you see the shark up here, they read it from left to right. Now, however, we want the right-hand side, the non-shading area right here. So we're going to go to the positive side. Let's see. Let's see. And we look for 2.47. I mean, sorry, 1.47. 1. 1. 1.4. There it goes. 1.47 right there which is 0.9292 okay so it's right here so 0.9292 which means that my p-value equals 1 1 minus 0 0.9292 which comes out to be zero point zero seven zero eight. So that would be the answer using the the table. Because remember this part right here is zero point nine two nine two however they want the other the shading area okay well, so now using excel now using excel put this down here and excel all right okay using excel we're gonna use this Use this command right here. So equal, it's bigger here, to equals um, normal distribution. There you go, right here. That's the one they use. All right. And you can see right here a little syntax going on there. The first number is going to be your mean. No, sorry, the first number is going to be the value, which in our case it is 1.47. Okay. 1.47. Okay. The second value will be your zero, which is your mean. Third value will be your standard deviation by one, because we're doing by z score. Okay. And then they ask you about cumulative true or false. Okay, so on this one, we're gonna do. Let's see now. Okay, but see, but it's not giving us a point zero seven zero eight. That she's giving for again, um. Just like um, the the table, Excel also read from left to right. So actually, we have to do one minus. So if I do right here, for example, equals one minus. There it goes. 
okay? I just select it up here. Or you could just do one equals and do one equals one minus, I'm sorry, equals one minus normal distribution, 1.47, comma, zero, comma, one, comma, true. And make sure you double click here on true. Okay, everything's uppercase. There it goes again. Okay. All right. So that's letter A. Uh, question A. And then when I do it, I'm going to do with uh, Fisher Studios. Um, let me go ahead and close this. And I'm going to do it from, from the beginning. Let me close it here. So I want to show you guys. So in case when you open this, so when you open Visual Studio, run the program, you're going to get this window right here. You might see a little bit different. But I try to, uh, I believe I kept my standard default. So it should, so if you have your default, it should be like, just like this. I'm going to go cre do create new project. I'm going to go to R, project R, the name. Uh, I can do problem 842 okay um, change this to the folder more friendly let me go and just put in the nine desktop okay. Space. Okay. Uh, everything okay. And just wait for this to create the thing for you. All right. So here we have two win two places where we can write this. And let me move this up here. So here we have the script uh, window. That's where you write your programs. And run it all at once and by pressing up here. However, here is what we call the R interactive. This is where you will write your program line by one and it will run itself after you press enter line by line. Okay, so for example, uh, if I want to know what is the pro our previous the pre our question, what's the probability when this how's this called 1.47 on the greater side? For um, for um, R the R language, you use the P norm, and see how it's already little pop up here. This is one of the reasons that I like uh, Visual Studios compared to other programs. Some of them they don't do this or they don't do as good as Visual Studio does it. But of course, we all have a preference of you know which one to use. Okay, we have the little parentheses there. And I'm going to put 1.47, comma, the value, comma, the zero for our mean, one for standard deviation, as you guys can see, tells you right there, the value, the, the mean, the standard deviation, if it's lower tail, it's true, if it's a log p, it's false, and um, which is what this really means is that if you reading from left to right like the way the table is you would do true but however we're doing the upper right tail so i do false okay be sure you keep a capital letters otherwise it will give you an error message and see we have the same answer as before okay and so that will be the, that matches up with the one over here. Where is it? Okay. And remember, there's the upper tail, but we just did right now. If it, now, when we do letter B, which I'm going to show in a second, that will be the lower tail. So when we instead of doing false, we're going to do true on the on the R program. Now, for those who wants to do um, using the TI-84. Let me, unfortunately, I don't have the, the computer emulator, 
So I'm gonna have to just tap it down for you step by step. Um, doesn't really matter which version. I mean, a little bit different here and there, but they will pretty much should go the same way. Um, you're gonna end up going to you do your second. So you're gonna do your your second key. Press the second key. Then you're gonna press. Mm, no, not the way I want to. Alright, I'm gonna do this here. So if you want it, then do using your TI. Mm -hmm. You're gonna do the second key. Then you're gonna do uh, bars, key, the bars key, and that you're gonna stand for the. We're gonna be using distribution. You're gonna see in the upper, it's in um, in blue. And then you when you then you're gonna look for normal CDF. CDF, that be option number two. And they're gonna when you do that, they're gonna ask you if they ask you for the lower, upper, mean, standard deviation. You're gonna write down in this case the lower is gonna be from the point you start reading from left to right. In this case, 1.47. Upper, some big number. I will use this E299. That's like the standard one for just to keep it safe. Um, many professors would prefer that one, or you can use some big number like a thousand or so. I personally like this one because doesn't matter one number. This number though, it could be any number, but still this one's gonna be bigger than any number of this. Because right now it could be 1.47, but how? What happened? What if in the future you get a problem? And which your lower is a hundred, three hundred, or something else. Okay, so this prim. Oh, and by the way, e ninety nine. It really means one times ten to ninety nine power, which is really means like, you know, like a quadrat. Well, you know, one, one with many zeros. Okay. Um. Your mean is gonna be zero because we're using the z scores. To calculate this, therefore the standard deviation is also going to be also zero or one. Sorry, one. Now, if your calculator gives you after you pressing number two, it gives you this normal CDF CDF parentheses. You write down your lower value or your lower bound, comma your upper bound, comma your mean. Comma, you stand deviation and close parenthesis, and then you press enter. Okay, on this list, you will just hit paste, press enter, and enter again. Okay, and that should give you the same value by default. Yeah. All right, you'll get the same answer, 0 0.078. By the way, in the calculator, this E is located when you press second key, and then you press the comma key. Okay, it's right on top of the comma. All right, it, the second you can look at it as the shift key in the, comp in the computer keyboard. Okay, all right. Now we're gonna go ahead and do question B. Question B is asking you the same question. The difference is instead of from the the upper right, instead of the upper right, it wants it for the lower left. Okay. Okay. Let me make some. Let me score this up. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. So, the lower left, so just look at the bell curve. So, your mean is right here, so 0.60, and also not your z score of 0. And the one, uh, the lower left, so it's probably right here somewhere. Seeing that this will be point um, negative two point seven. Right, that's two point seven. Yeah, it's negative two point seven. Okay. So now you want to know what is the the value of that. So one using the table. You go here. Oops. Here, you look for negative two point seventy. So with the z-score right here, so I'm going to look for 2.70 and 2.70, that's the second decimal point here, place. In our case, it's 0 0.0035. And since it's already written from left to right, we don't need to do any calculations. So right here, we can set that your p-value. equals 0 0.0035 okay so that's how you get using the table and using Excel minimize that I will say equal normal distribution negative 2.70 right okay comma the mean zero comma send deviation one comma a commutative function is true double click here close it there and there it goes also, Excel read it from left to right, so we'll keep that number how it is. We don't need to adjust it. That'll be for B. The R program, and not just this video here. All right. So, on that one, I'm going to do the following. So, we do P value, I mean, P norm. Parentheses. So you have a negative 2.70, comma. Your mean is zero, comma. Standard deviation is one, comma. And then they ask if it's true, if it's lower tail. This is a lower tail. The left hand side is considered a lower tail. The right hand side is considered upper tail. So we'll say true. We should use the capital letters. Enter. And there it goes. All right, cool. Okay. It's not that hard, so as you know what you need to do, and you need to just practice. Okay. Let's see. Using the TID4, same as before. The TID4 will be the same as before. You will do um, when you um, okay. when you start doing your normal uh, when you do normal CDF. You know your lower your lower your lower is going to be um, negative two point. Wait, hold on. Sorry, not that. Your lower is going to be some big number because you read from left to right, so be. We can say a negative e to 99, or you can do a negative a thousand for the old 10,000. This will work for that one. Your upper will be the number we have 2.70. The mean equals zero. The standard deviation equals one. Okay, 
Okay, I'm trying to do this most uh, the best that the most professor would like for you guys to do it in different universities. Okay, oh, pretty much how the book wants you guys to do it. I know the book wants you guys to do it using the table. Some professor wants you to use Excel. Uh, I know um, the other the other university wants to use the calculator. And I guess for those graduate students, or for those who are using the R solver, that's I just showed you guys how to do it with the R program uh, language. I mean, okay. So let's see. I may say anything else before continuing on to the next one. I think that's it. All right. Um, letter C is the not equal. Whenever they ask, they mention about the not equal. It really means you're doing a two tilt, a two tilt. All right. So for letter C, it's not thing. Okay. Letter C is two tilt. Means this. So pretty much this is saying like, you know, and the if they give you a problem, the story will go something like this: that they found a mean, they're claiming there's a mean of 0.60. A research scientist said, "I am no, it's not. It's a different number, or it's a different mean." And when they, those keywords like it's different, you can say, "Okay, so that means it's not equal." And when it's not equal, pretty much it means that you're gonna have a two tail probability on this shading area plus the probability of this shading area so just um so you're gonna have these two you're gonna multiply in other words you're gonna find the shed the probability on one of them and you're gonna multiply by two okay and so in this case they give us a z score of what negative 2.70 2.70 so this really means also the positive 2.7 since they're both equally distant at the same. So we need to find the probability of this one and the probability of this one. Well, since we already found it from the previous question, we just follow the same step using the table and all that stuff. And then you would just go ahead and so we know this the probability of this one is 0 0.0035 therefore this will be the same thing 0 0.035 so if you add them up together oh yeah I'll give you so 0 0.035 times 2 or just add them together will give you 0, 0, 0, 0.0069 so this will be the answer for that one okay so the p-value for this will be that one and that's pretty much it so letter c is similar to b oh, i wrote down b right here this is b okay All right, I think that's it for C. And uh, reminder, feel free, you know, uh, leave a comments, suggestions uh, about the problems or materials. Also, please subscribe. You know, push, click like or unlike. And uh, for question D, we're gonna do. Let's do D. And this is asking us, and let me go and let me write it just do this the right way. H not equals let's see P equals 0 0.60. H A 
and p is what is almost less than 0.660 and then they want to they give us a z star of 0.25 so it's this one yes yeah okay so now we're gonna do normal bell curve So there's the mean of 0 0.06, 0 0.25, since we know this is the same as 0, I'm just going to put the number here, 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So it's actually that we're talking about, oh, I see the mother. Hmm, less now. Okay, so they're talking about this part right here. 2.25. Okay. So looking at it, definitely it's going to be, since the middle part is represents 50%, so it's going to be a little bit over 50%, a little bit more over 0 .50, 0 0.50, it could be 0 .58, 50, 50, 60, around there. Uh, let's see how this comes out to. And step one is in the table. We'll go to table. Remember, record the table read from left to right. So whatever number we find here, so match up what we're looking for. We look for 0 0.25. 0 0.2 is right there. 0 0.25 is right here. So it's 0 0.5987. I was saying before it's somewhere around 58 60 so so therefore we found now that the distribution the probability or in this case the p value is 0 0.59 was 68 or oh, 87 87 okay Using the Excel, minimize this. We're going to do as following equal normal distribution. This one right in the bottom. Be careful, there's two of them. And your number is 0 0.25. Your mean is 0. Sand division is 1. And you're going to do the true there it goes I know that did my little preparation here on the side right one two using now R we're gonna do um, P norm we're gonna do the Point zero twenty five, comma, what is mm, misspelled something? It's misspelled. P norm. Okay. Zero point twenty five, comma. The mean is zero. Standard deviation is one. Lower tail, yes. So that'll be true. Make sure you do those in capital letters. Otherwise, it will won't give, will give you an error message. There it goes. All right. Um, if you guys want me to show you more how to use R and away from the problems, go ahead and just comment below. See, I'm I am looking for ideas. All right. So R the TID four, the TID four is the, it's gonna be the same thing with it as letter B. Okay, but we're just going to use different numbers. Um, so the, the lower is going to be negative e to the 99, or 1000 work on this one. Your upper is going to be 0 0.25. Your mean equals zero is the deviation. 
equals one and you just paste it and then okay hope that helped you guys out it interests you know you comment suggestions like dislike please how to in your guys input you know how to improve these videos all right have a good day i'll see you next thanks for what time you're speaking you're seeing this video and thank you bye